Professor Suhas Palshikar is a renowned political analyst and he is known as one of the top people oriented intellectuals in the country. We all know him through his articles appearing in leading newspapers and periodicals. He was the professor and head of the department of political science and public administration at the Savitribai Phule Pune University. He is the coordinator of Lokniti program on comparative democracy at CSDS. He is the chief editor of studies in Indian politics. He was involved in several research projects and specializes many in the areas of political process in India and political sociology of democracy. Parishikar sir. Anwar Rajan, Milin Champanerkar, UCL Chai Itar Sagre Sarkari, Rupa Ben, Sitlo, Lucy and friends. I am sorry, I would be speaking mostly in English, somewhat in Marathi, but since Hindi is being forced, I will not be speaking in Hindi. As an aside, and since this is a PUCL uh, function, uh, I would also like to draw your attention to the sad demise of a famous PUCL uh, activist and leader in Gujarat, Achyut Bhai Yadnik, a couple of days ago. Uh, so let us remember Achyut Bhai. Uh, some of you might know him because he had been coming to Pune from time to time uh, in various uh, contexts. Uh, well, where do we begin? Because having listened to Lucy and Citilen, uh, I don't have the courage to either moralize or to theorize what is happening there and what they have reported. Also, after a very detailed analysis of the situation of both Manipur and Northeast, by Rupa Ben. I don't think I can add to those details any further. So, uh, in the sense, the first thing I would like to do as my job as a panelist this evening would be to apologize to our brothers and sisters in Manipur who are suffering for the indignities and the violations of human rights. And on behalf of all of us, assure them that we share their sorrow, dejection, anger and helplessness in this moment of crisis. Though we know that Manipur is not for the first time witnessing a crisis, in a sense it has been a hotbed of crisis for a long time as a result of which the APSPA was imposed on Manipur for a very, very long time and lifted only recently, a few years ago. Even then, in spite of all this, in a sense, background of violence, the last hundred days or so have witnessed something that has shaken us at the roots of our foundations. PUCL has done very well, therefore, in not only organizing this discussion, but also terming it as a discussion on the bitter reality. They have listed a number of questions, and you must have heard uh, the list of questions that Menin Champanekar initially uh, read out. I will not even attempt to answer those questions for the simple reason that we live in such a world today that the idea of facts does not trouble us. That something is a truth is always contested now because it is your truth versus my truth. It is Puki truth versus Maitai truth. It is state government truth versus government of India truth. And therefore, it is not a question of finding truth as such, 
Mm. But finally, how we came here? <laughs> that is probably the question that we should be asking. A PUCL event on a far northeastern state about which many of us wouldn't probably know if we were asked to show the state on the map of India. But when we are discussing this, we have come to a situation where, and I am not saying that it is an injustice to you or to Lucy, but we have only one side that can be present. There can't be two sides present on the same dais. That is the situation where we have come about. A dialogue, not in Imphal, not in Delhi, but not even in PUCL platforms is possible. That is the lack of or death of conversation. And therefore, it would be apt to say that this is a situation of not just bitter reality, but a situation of a civil war. A war between two communities, but there are so many fault lines as has been mentioned by George earlier. It is a war between the state government and a community. It is a war between government of India and some people. It is a war between the valley and the hill tribes. It is a war between the Hindus and the Hinduness of them was already mentioned as to how they became Hindu and Christians. All kinds of fault lines are overlapping. मुझे एक पुखला तरी फक्त मुद्दा है कि जैसा एक उन्हीं तरी गट विरुद्ध दूसरा गट ऐसा नहीं तर वेग वेग या पद्धति नहीं है गट विभाग ले के ले लिया है आने त्यांची जागा नहीं कि काय है है तुम ही जितने अस्तित्व तुम धरते when you are the sufferer your place is that of a sufferer when you are the perpetrator you think that you are in the right and therefore you should get the status of scheduled tribes, for example. And sitting here far away from Manipur, uh, we might be confounded what is this business of Maite is wanting to be scheduled tribes. But if you want to reflect on it for a minute and forget the fact that this particular tribe is demanding something or this particular group is demanding the status of scheduled tribes, can you relate it to the many other conflicts that are going on in India where some communities are suddenly finding out that they are scheduled castes, that they are scheduled tribes or even they are OBCs. The demands for OBC status have actually resulted into violence in the northwest part of the country starting with Haryana to Maharashtra and in Karnataka they have actually won a victory. A dominant community becoming OBC has already happened in Karnataka. We shy away from speaking these facts for fear of political reprisal. But the fact remains that dominant communities are now demanding their inclusion in the coveted spheres of so-called reserve category. This is happening everywhere in India. Maites in Manipur are exactly playing to the same copy book now and demanding the status of a scheduled tribe. So without going into the merits of what they are asking for and even without going into the merits of the Honorable High Court's decision which triggered all this in the first place where the High Court didn't have any business to give that ruling, we can say that this is in a sense something that we should resonate to. It is not the Maitai's problem or the Kupi's problem. It is a problem of all of us in India where we are overplaying the questions of our religious, ethnic, caste, linguistic, all sorts of identities. We are allowing these identities to overpower us over everything else. So if you were listening to what Ms. Rupa Chennai was saying, you will find that there is a material basis to all this. But look at the picture that we get. The picture we get is that there is a dominant community here which is trying to overpower both culturally and in material terms another community. That is happening. This is a sure shot recipe for a civil war. A 
a dominant community making unreasonable demands and b a complete stoppage of all conversation between warring or fighting or conflicting communities if these two elements are there then i guess it is not just manipur but all of us in different respects are on the borders of this possibility that we will be continuously at war with ourselves it's not a question of whether i am at war with another community in saying that i belong to one community and you belong to another community i am already at war with myself because i am losing myself and subsuming myself into this idea of just one community and one identity that is what we are doing so i would suggest that while we should all apologize and commiserate with our friends from manipur particularly his own friends and he narrated and lucy also narrated very harrowing examples of this but look at the way the state in a sense operates you gave the example of one professor from jnu but you may be knowing another example from hyderabad university again of a professor of political science um, and i don't think there is any need for secrecy because his name is already in the papers a very sober and sane voice about what is happening in the northeast professor kham khan son house a case under penal code 153 that is creating enmity between communities hatred and enmity between communities has been filed against him in imfa he works at hyderabad he has been writing and he has been asking this question about why do we lose this possibility of a conversation all he has been doing is to try to theorize this issue in the larger theoretical framework of federalism that this is a failure of federalism and of course multi level federalism because federalism is not just giving state route to manipur but also to give under article 371 various rights to different district autonomous areas of manipur and various other provisions of article 371 that is something which he has been asking but a case has been filed against him so you can imagine how not just dialogue but also even expressing opinions comes to an end in this situation how do then one can one look at this how do we look at it i would suggest therefore again departing from manipur and bringing you to the larger all india context that this is precisely what we should be understanding as a majoritarian way of understanding culture politics and nation if you add up once this framework then majority you will believe that the majority community whichever that community wherever it is has the right to push aside the rest that we own this land nation language or culture whatever therefore we the majority then become the parameters of defining what is culture what is good what is moral what is rightful and the others become wrong that is a majoritarian view point where we are moving manipur shows a small in a sense snapshot of state level or localized majoritarianism but this majoritarianism pervades all parts of the country in a sense this impulse towards majoritarianism manje hi ji vritti aste ki bahusankhya samajakade sagle adhikar asle pahije hi ji vritti hai ti इम्पल्स असते ती प्रत्येक समाजामध्ये जिथे जिथे बहुविधता असते तिथे स्वाभाविकपणे असू शकते देर इज ऑलवेज अ नॅचरल टेंडन्सी अँड देअर फोर आय वुड कॉल इट अ मेजॉरिटेरियन इम्पल्स वेन एव्हर देअर इज अ फ्लुरल सोसायटी 
particularly of this asymmetric kind that you have one majority or plural group and others who are smaller in numbers. It happens and it has happened worldwide always. When that happens, one possibility always is that the state apparatus is taken over by the majority. So the majority becomes always rightful and legal. The second possibility always is a separate but peaceful unrelated existence, ghettoization. You live in your area, I live in my area. That would be a ghettoization. Alternatively, there is a bad sense in which the third possibility is that of melting pot. In India, somehow the term melting pot is seen as something very great. It is the other way around. It simply means that you as a different group melt into the so-called mainstream. And that is precisely what is happening. So, these are the possibilities of politics and cultural politics always taking place in plural societies. It needs special efforts to ward off this. When you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this, they are not going to be able to do this. They are not going to be able to do this. They are not going to be able to do this. They are not going to be able to do this. या बहुसंख्या को आधा पसंद आपला बचा हुई है आसो होते नहीं सर त्याचा सर्टी बहुसंख्या आने इतर समाज ना सरकार ना आने प्रिवेल सरकारी संगठन ना खास प्रयत्न करावे लगे दस्ता गवर्नमेंट्स हैव टू बी इस्पेशियली नॉन मेजोरिटेरियन इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड ए मेजोरिटेरियन ऑनस्वॉट अगेन रनिंग अवे फ्रॉम Sri Lanka has experienced majoritarianism and how it resulted into a civil war and violence and deaths and a near partition of that country. Look at another neighbor of ours, Pakistan, and not on the Bangla question, but the language question again, where a dominant community gave up its own language for purposes of political power, the Punjabis. They gave up Punjabi language, adopted Urdu, and there comes Urdu domination in Pakistan. Myanmar's example was already mentioned in this context. So it's not that we don't know what would happen if you go the majoritarian way. It is that we sometimes get carried away by the fact that one community, if it is in a majority, has the right to dictate terms on others. And therefore I would say that for us safely, so called safely, because nobody is anywhere safe as the train incidents recently have shown, but safely living in Pune, Manipur wants that look, this is what happens if you adopt a majoritarian politics and a majoritarian way of cultural practices. That is the message of Manipur. So I would argue that even if you did not want to get interested in Manipur, you should get interested in Manipur for at least this selfishness that the Frankenstein of majoritarianism. When you have some kind of a thing, you have to say that तो आज दूसरे अंचल ओके और हाथ ठेवत हैं तो तो कभी ना कभी आप ले ही सगे अंचल ओके और हाथ ठेवना रहते हो यहाँ से बहन ठेवने ची आठवां मणिपुर आप ले ला आता करूँ दे दे quickly finally then look at what is happening in मणिपुर there are militias practically of different communities operating in many parts of northeast but particularly currently in मणिपुर there is inaction of state government and for each of these you can ask the question why but I would come to the answer which is just one word answer and therefore I don't think that is needed for every question. So why is it that the state government is inactive? Why is it that article 356 that he mentioned has not been imposed? But sitting there, I would ask you a question. Even if article 356 were imposed, who will govern Manipur? And that fact 
would remain as a haunting fact that finally it would be the central government through an administration which is dominated by the majority community so that majoritarianism would still come that would still remain so where do we move from here what can be the possible moves obviously making demands on the state is a uh, hobby horse of ucl sorry <laughs> PUCL would always make demands on the government. But our job is not just of making demands on the PUCL, but to try and spread this message that when the state itself becomes majoritarian, Jeva Rajya Samstha Bhusankhyak Vadi Mante, Teva Nagarikanna, Tya Rajya Samstha Sa Hazo Bhusankhyak Vadi Atma Ahe Pokta Sa, To Kasa Pazula Karta Ye. आणि हा बहुसंख्याकवादाचा पोपट जो आहे तो परत पिंजऱ्यात कसा टाकता येईल हे शोधण्याचे मार्ग नागरिकांना शोधावे लागतात ते त्यांच्या डेली प्रॅक्टिसेसमधनं शोधावे लागतात यू कॅन्ट रिलाय ऑन गव्हर्नमेंट्स वेन देर इज दिस काइंड ऑफ वेव ऑफ मेजॉरिटेरियनिझम अराउंड यू एव्हरीवेअर इट नीड्स इंट्रॉस्पेक्शन ऑन आवर पार्ट ॲज सिटीझन्स टू आस्क bad and difficult questions are we majoritarians in linguistic regional caste east ethnic religious whatever terms and can we shed away that majoritarianism what sustains that majoritarianism in our minds only then we can start pushing the state the second thing we should be doing and i honestly believe that that would be a big failure as i started with which namely the death of conversation today if i am opposed to the reservations of a particular community i can't speak to people from that community and they will not speak to me or they will speak to me in the language of violence only if i am taking the side of other community today then my community will boycott me both in the narrations of Lucy and Centenary, this point came. They gave examples of actually some intermarriages. You know, when communities live together, they tend to do businesses together. They tend to begin exchanging cultures with each other. They tend to live not just as competitors, but sometimes they as individuals communities might fight but as individuals they fall in love they marry new zealandry similarly has done an episode on this marriage where the woman and her two children are now forced to live separately because the husband emite cannot visit them she cannot with her children visit him they are separated it is this lack of minimum civilization which is something where the questions are not to the Nbiren Singh government or not to the Narendra Modi government these are questions to the society to us to people in Pune whether they are Hindus or Muslims or Christians or whatever the questions are to us are we really being nice citizens or nice human beings in any sense of the term in not just allowing such separations but probably also gloating and glorifying these separations of human minds of human beings can we talk to each other and i am not saying that the cookies and maite should talk to each other because i am not entitled to tell them to talk to each other unless we here in the rest of india are able to talk to each other and i will leave this question to you as enlightened citizens are we talking to each other honestly in pune are our housing societies talking to all our neighbors honestly to each other honestly we are not if we are not then we should not be giving any advice to the friends or foes Maitais or cookies, whoever they are. I think it is this 
very troubly good feature that Manipur has brought into sharp focus. So, on the one hand, while as nice human beings, we should apologize to our brothers and sisters there for what they are suffering for. We should also thank them for warning us and cautioning us what is going to happen to us. Maybe tomorrow, maybe day after tomorrow, we don't know. If we also start keeping quiet and we also create artificial valleys and hills to separate us and them. It is this us and them business that Manipur warns us against. Thank you very much.